you know, one of the things that's wonderful about writing is feeling a universe fall into place, right? So all these little bits fall, come together. It's really this incredible anti-entropic uh, miracle. Um, when, you know, the jigsaw puzzle is beginning, you know, you're, you, at first it's really hard, you're putting things in, you're trying to figure out where things go. And then at some point, you are kind of putting in the pieces uh, faster and you feel like, oh yeah, this is, this is how it was supposed to be. I don't know exactly what gives us that feeling of um, something being already preformed that you're just discovering, but I think a, a lot of people who write or, or probably do all sorts of different kinds of artistic things have that sense at some point, you, know, you get it and you go, oh, okay, it's sort of like this. Um, it's, it's deceptive because of course you never write, like you're never, in you, you're, you're caught into this, in this wave of thinking that you're being kind of led towards this wonderful thing. But when you get there, you realize you're actually just at the next starting line for making it better, but okay. But that, that moment of being um, caught up in something and just being absorbed in this other world and figuring out how everything is going to go and how the sentences are going to look and what words you're going to use and what should happen there and why did she do that? All of that um, I find just incredibly thrilling. I always say I'm, I'm, never, I'm never really happy unless I'm living in more than one world at a time. So I have to be in at least two different worlds to be happy. And reading was how I did that when I was a kid. That would let me live in more of the world than one. And, um, and then at some point I realized as a child that you could, you could read, you could write something and it was, felt like reading. So you would write a story for yourself and it would feel like you were reading that story. And I think that's when I became hooked. Of course, you're uh, reading the story that happens to go exactly the way you would most like for it to go <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, it doesn't quite feel that way, though, right? Because, because there's so much uncertainty and, and so much, um, you know, you just, I don't know. It, always, it feels a little more high wire than, than, than being a closed circle where you're like, oh, I'll just make up the story I want to hear. I think it's, uh, you know, often people talk about whether people are um, plotters or pantsers, whether they plot things out carefully ahead of time or, or do everything by the seat of their pants or something. And, and uh, I've always felt it's both. I plot, I plot a lot. I, every book starts with a notebook and there's just, you know, this notebook took a long time. You can see it's kind of worn out. That was my Daring Darlene notebook. So I plot, 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 and then I write a draft. But even while I'm writing that draft, it turns out that plotting is a bit of a, a you know, an illusion because you're still really out there trying to fly over the abyss. You know, it's you have to make up things as you go. It's never quite as certain as oh, I've set everything out, and so now it's just automatic. So I think that's. What also makes this sense of reading and writing close for me, that I'm reading, when I'm reading, I don't know where the story's going to go. When I'm writing, I thought I knew where the story was going to go, but I didn't actually. And so there's this sense of just reading very slowly. So how much time are you spending with, with the notebook plotting before you actually start your draft? Um... It, well, the notes, the notebooks always they carry on. So I will keep, I, the keep, I will keep using, I will keep writing in the notebook as I go. So I do a lot of plotting in the notebook, and I start writing, and then I have to come back and replot and think and you know do bits of research and all the rest, and then I'm and then I'm writing again, and then. I'll be sending off a draft and getting it back and with the 13 page previously described editorial letter and the letter will say, um, this, this is, oh, this is fine, this is fine. It just needs a plot and a character that we care about and stakes or something like this, you know, <laughs> in other words. Sure, just those little and so, things. <laughs> and so then, you know, you go back, you weep 
and you go back to the notebook and you start figuring out how to solve those problems. So, so I guess the, the, the notebook is a, it, it starts before I start drafting, but then it's a constant companion through. And it really varies how long I'm just in notebook phase before I start drafting. Part of that depends on um, where we are in the teaching year. So how and, long, uh, on average, does it take you to get from the start of that notebook to uh, approaching a, a finished draft? Because I know, obviously, publishing gets involved. You can't necessarily control the, the timeline past a certain point. But by the right. time you're turning in a, 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 a draft that's ready for that 13-page letter, what's our <laughs> Right. Um, yeah, well, I look back at this notebook just to see when when I started. And I started um, in September of 2017, um, plotting out Daring Darlene. And so here it is, spring of 2020. And we, we had some, uh, you know, delays that weren't anybody's fault and so on. So that's actually... In, in my writing history, that's pretty speedy, actually. I think um, once I'm at the point where I'm just drafting, I can draft, you know, like once I've got a first draft, I think, I think I have it plotted out. I'm always wrong. I'm always wrong. <laughs> but I think that I know how it's supposed to go and et cetera. Okay. Then usually I can do a draft of that in the first draft in like six weeks or something. But that's the first draft. And then that's not one that I'm yet, uh, you know, sending off to people for 13 page letters. And then there's, you know, the reworking, the reworking, the going back to this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's only when it's been through a lot of iterations um, does it go off to one of the people who, you know, whose opinion really matters. <laughs> 